This is a lecture for my professional responsibility class. <clears throat> We're going to be talking about model rule 3.2. Model rule 3.2, which is about expediting litigation. This is one of the simpler rules and um, out of all the rules that start with three, it's one of the ones that's a little less uh, often tested on the MPRE, but you should still be aware of it. Here's the rule. It's one sentence. A lawyer shall make reasonable efforts to expedite litigation consistent with the interests of the client. So what are we talking about here? The problem is lawyers who use delay tactics. And so we, you can actually violate the ethical rules and be subject to discipline for um, uh, unnecessary delay tactics or ex uh, um, excessive delay tactics. So comment one, dilatory practices bring the administration of justice into disrepute. Although there will be occasions when a lawyer may properly seek postponement for, a personal, for personal reasons, it is not proper for a lawyer to routinely fail to expedite litigation solely for the convenience of the advocates, nor will a failure to expedite be reasonable if done for the purpose of frustrating an opposing party's attempt to obtain rightful redress or repose. It is not a justification that similar conduct is often tolerated by the bench and bar. The question is whether a competent lawyer acting in good faith would regard the course of action as having some substantial purpose other than delay. Realizing financial or other benefit from an otherwise improper delay in litigation is not a legitimate interest of the client. And so let's talk about this for just a moment. We have two, they kind of break into two uh, 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 delay tactics in the, into two types of problems. And one is the lawyer who's just a pathological procrastinator, right? So this is a person who's kind of a slacker and they, um, uh, no matter what's happening, they always try to kick the can down the road a little bit and ask for postponements and so forth. And at some point that can cross a line and become excessive. Now, having said that, I want to make sure my students understand that it's a pretty routine to ask for extensions and continuances and postponements and things like that when you actually need time. And I'm going to give you a few examples that are really routine. And so you're practicing litigation. You get the other side's, let's say, motion, pretrial motion for summary judgment or to dismiss or to exclude evidence or something like that. And courts usually have a turnaround time uh, for filing a reply brief. Well, unfortunately, you get their motion on a day when you're headed to court for like a three-week trial or a five-week trial or something that there's no way you're going to be able to re uh, do the reply brief. So you call the uh, opposing counsel and say, look, I uh, have a, a scheduling conflict. I, I need an extension of time. And it is the, this is very routine. And you know what? They should say yes. And if somebody calls you, you should say, sure, you can have an extra couple of weeks or whatever. I have no objection. And um, either they or you will notify the court that you've agreed to give them extra time to file a reply brief. And, uh, and when you're a lawyer, you should do this because um, the next time you'll be the one who needs the favor. And the same is true of you're at a scheduling conference about litigation with a judge and the judge proposes a date for picking a, a jury or something for your upcoming trial. And you look at your calendar and that's the the week that you scheduled a family vacation um, uh, overseas or to, Cal to another state or something like that. It, it, can you bring up, Your Honor, I, I, that's the day I have my vacation, uh, uh, the week I have my vacation scheduled? Sure. It's hard for lawyers to um, carve out time from their, clear their schedules and spend time with their families. And so that that is okay, and you, we will hope that you would do. You would agree to find another date for the other side, right? It's probably their only time that year they're taking a a, a week off with their family, or something. Um, what's not okay is when uh, you have a lawyer who basically works for three hours. Uh, they, they won't do anything before noon and anything after three in the afternoon, and that's it. And and so it ends up being this huge imposition every for everyone else involved every time they have to deal with it. That's our first problem. The second problem is, um, and this one is a little more of a gray area, is when your client wants you to um, stall or delay. And I want to give a, a couple examples. It, it is okay 
to try to buy time for your client that's advantageous to your client. And so after law school, I was a legal aid lawyer for a while, and we represented tenants who are facing evictions. And guess what? The, the long, if we knew that they were going to get a, evicted, sometimes buying them a few extra weeks or an extra month um, and, and making the proceedings take, uh, uh, gave them time to get, get their affairs in order and move and, and so forth. And so that's one thing where it, it's very common, very, very common that in litigation that um, time, one side um, would really like to have a little more time. You can't always get it, but usually one side, um, it, it, time is to their advantage. What you can't do, and, and, and by the way, that's probably legitimate. That's probably legitimate. What you, you probably can't do is when you're stalling things um, because you know uh, you're hoping that the other side's star witness will become unavailable right? Or that the judge that you know, the judge, the case has been assigned to, you think that they don't like you and you know, they're uh, going to retire at some point uh, uh, in another month or something. And so it, now you're really just gaming the system, right? So you're not trying to give your client time, or if you're a criminal defense attorney and you know, your client's probably going to jail, their, their extra time of freedom before they're incarcerated, assuming they're out on bail it might be their last time with their family for a long time. And so that's one thing, right, is to, uh, to, you, to have the proceedings to uh, um, run their course, their full course. And uh, um, on the other hand, it's another thing. And here's another one. One side, this is, this is an awful strategy where you're, we call it the, the quagmire strategy, where you are just filing endless, endless, endless motions a lot of what, uh, them being kind of questionable at the other side, just to drag things out and run out, run them out of resources, right? Uh, um, and or run out the clock on something, or just drain them financially. And there are lawyers who do this, and that is considered unethical. Okay, so let's go back to our slides and wrap this up. Oh, that's the end of our rule, and right. So we we, we don't want to delay uh, this lecture longer than we need to, and um, we're going to expedite this by moving on to our next rule, which is going to be three point three. As you saw on the slide, I put.